where the studio began in this journey of making digital art because it didn't have this name of immersive technology and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, to the end, it was a, no, we say something that we like, we get like a thread out of, no, like we start to work with audiovisuals on around 20 years ago, exactly, or not 23 years ago, that's to be more fair. In 2000, I was studying computer science and I was studying computer science because I want to make digital art somehow. So I was, when I was 15 or something like this, there was a, an exhibition or like a festival called Art Futura, Future Arts in Barcelona, which was showcasing the top, top of the year 3D animations, which basically were done in universities, not still like being commercial or for films. And they were like super weird things made with 3D graphics was the beginning of 3D graphics. And when I saw that, when I was 15, I would say, I said, I want to do this. And unfortunately in Barcelona, there was not nothing special to be, to study that at that time, there was too new, let's say. And I had two options, go to like fine arts, study fine arts, and then try to jump into digital art or study computer science and then try to jump to, to digital art. And I choose the second one. So when I finish, when I was finishing my career at the university in Barcelona, I find out a software, which was called IS Thesis, which was from a French coder developer who basically was like a video synthesizer that you were able to do like live video sessions. There were like two channels, mix it in between. You can load some plugins, let's say, or graphic generators. Some of them were like video loopers. It was one of the first BJ softwares, no BJ meaning for someone who's doing visuals for the music. And I was amazed for that. And I was on an email list on the year 2000 with the people who were using this software. And we were saying, okay, why don't we do organize a meeting, like a nerd meeting of this software, because it's so amazing. It's so new and we have so many things to share. And that thing after many turns became like one of the first BJ festivals in the world, I would say. In year 2000, organized by myself and some friends, let's say, was like, I had no experience organizing anything. It was just like, at the beginning was like a nerd meeting and it ended up being like a festival with a ninja tune and many artists from many countries. We had no money. We just offered the hotel and people were happy to come to Barcelona and share. Well, that was the beginning of something that put me on the scene of the visual of oh, the point was like visual scene or BJ scene. And we made like a organization or not the people who met in Barcelona doing this. We met like a cultural association, which was like a collective to organize this festival for the next year, from the next year. And in 2002, there was a group coming from Valencia, which is a city that is two hours south from Barcelona. They did drum and bass and visuals. And one of the guys who came there was Santi. One of the musicians was Santi, who is actually my partner at Playmodes. We met there in 2002, it was like a free party, rave scene, visuals, all made with a lot of empathy and no money. And we start to work together there or to meet and we see like the interest that we had. And he also joined this association collective. And in the coming years, I started, I had a, there was a visit from, maybe that's an, another important point, Zachary Lieberman, who is the, let's say the main let's say developer of open frameworks, which is a C plus creative coding framework was coming to Barcelona to make one of the first workshops of open frameworks in 2004. I was on that workshop and then, and there I was willing to work with video, with video sampling engine. So being able to record from a camera, put that in memory in the computer, and then be able to play or BJ or no, let's say manipulate the frames that I had in memory in different ways, like from a delay or a loop or no many concepts. Then I joined Santi and he was saying, okay, we could do the same with audio. <clears throat> and that, let's say that software was called or that installation. It became like a, an installation for video dance, like dancing yourself in with you in the past was called play modes. And some years after we keep on working and we you know for some like efficiency, we said we should make a company and we should define ourselves as a name and we choose play modes because what that was the project that initiated our path together, let's say. So it was an audiovisual sampling engine that we were coding or trying to code. 
it's still alive and we are still using it and let's say installing it. It's, you know, we remake it every several years, we make a new version. And that was the origin. So it was like a creative coding installation that was like a live sampling. And from that, we started working together and then like 15 years more, we came here today. <laughs>